There we go. Well, let's get right into it, I suppose. Previously on Les Duer. Jeremiah Devitt, alerted by the suicide and mysterious letter of his friend Anthony Beechworth, went in search for the memories of his past and that he had lost. Devitt discovered that in school he had taken part of a strange experiment. Its goal was to peek through the veil, the thin line between common reality and the world of horror, the madness that lies beyond, under the watch of the Eye of the Bird. During his search, he was inoculated uh, with the drug they had used back then. The serum made Devitt's mind travel for a few hours to the dreamlike realm of the veil. There he met his old classmate, Alexander Dupree, who urgently urged Devon to join his cause and cross with him to the realm of the bird. Devitt woke up from his trance. He found himself deeply convinced by his friend's words. He traveled to Dupree's house, where he discovered his friend had dosed himself with a new serum, leaving a catatonic body behind. This new drug was capable of transporting the mind permanently to the veil and beyond. Finally, Devitt found a vial of the serum and had it injected. He met his friend again in the veil, and together they walked through the last door, entering a world forbidden to human eyes. So I imagine we're not going to be playing Devitt anymore. Devitt's therapist, Dr. John Wakefield, worried by his patient's disappearance and strange visions, had sought the help of his colleague, Professor John Jahan Kaufman, an expert in the occult. Searching Anthony Beechworth's house, Wakefield and Kaufman found a disturbing returned letter in which Anthony had tried to warn Alexander Dupree of what could happen if the door was opened. He feared something from the other side might then come to ours. I think we'll be playing as uh, his therapist. They are coming. Okay, so let's examine this situation here. It looks like she has a a ring of salt that she really should not cross. None of us could prepare for this, so she's boarding up the windows. The visions screaming were merely a warning. And now it is too late. They are coming. Bird. Okay. Last night, I had the nightmare again, but this time it was different. This time he talked to me. It was the same unknown street, 
void of any sound in life. I walked aimlessly, as if I were lost. Then I could hear it, the, un the broken tromping on the wet cobblestones, the familiar sound of approaching, limping footsteps. Then, as before, he stood in front of me, gazing unrelentlessly, like he was expecting something. This time, he spoke. Give me back what he took. Nothing else. Give me back what he took. No, I have fallen asleep again. What time is it? Dawn already. It is time. Aha. When I moved my mouse, there was like a, a thing in the bottom corner that looked like I could click on. It was several months since Kaufman and I had found that mysterious letter in Anthony Beechworth's house. A letter never sent, with a cryptic warning of what would happen if a certain door were opened. It bore only the name of the address, Alexander Dupree. We felt sure Dupree was key to finding my patient and friend, Jeremiah Devitt who had disappeared in such strange circumstances, troubled by the death of his friend, Anthony. Devitt had visited the school of his childhood and had never been seen again. Kaufman soon conveyed to me his deep concerns and warned that I should con conduct any investigations with the utmost discretion. He pursued his own research, though his thoughts and methods remained a secret. In his last letter, he requested that I visit East Hill Lunatic Asylum in London. They were, they were, there were reasons to believe that Alexander had been institutionalized there for many years. I was asked to confirm this hypothesis and, if it proved correct, to gather whatever information might arise. London, East Hill. Oh wow, I actually have a, like a map I can go to now. Oh crap. Season 2, Episode 1, The Playwright. So this is East Hill Lunatic Asylum. I hope I can find information on Alexander Dupree here. Newspaper. What can you tell me about this building? The asylum? I've never been inside. And hope I never will. It's full of crazies, you know. Have you seen anything unusual around here? No, but maybe if you bought a newspaper. Good morning, boy. Will you give me a newspaper? Yes, sir. Sixpence. I'm afraid I don't have sixpence. Can you make change for a shilling? I'm sorry, I can't, sir. But you know where to find me when you have the coins. Fucking hell. Does, does the driver have change? Oh god, that, that took me back to the map. <sighs> I'm gonna have to go to different places. 
Can I just go home and get the money and come back? Um, a few cardboard sheets lie on the bench. Each shows a perfectly symmetric design in black ink. Good morning. Ah oh, yes, a lovely morning. Sunlight of a quite fascinating character. Beg your pardon? The light, it makes everything look different, you see. Er, look different. You see, light touches things, soaks them, and changes their nature. It makes them shimmer, or make them die. You live here in the hospital? I do, indeed. My family is a generous benefactor of the, to East Hill. They had me committed, but I don't blame them. They are just incapable of appreciating my art, or any art, for that matter. They mistake it for insanity. What are you drawing there? What you drawing, buddy? I am not just drawing, my friend. I'm trying to feel the light. To translate its power to the surface of the paper. Those animals don't like it, though. They don't want me to succeed. So they take them away. They take my drawings and they study them. And they laugh because my eyes can see the light. And theirs are blind. But someday, someday everyone will understand. Who are they? The ones who take your art away. Ha! Those foolish caretakers. They hide behind a big mirror where they think to think themselves safe. And they look at me. They observe me. They even take notes. You have some curious drawings there beside you. Oh, you mean these? They are my only art that makes any sense here. The doctors use them to... Cahole, cahole, some. I, I'm not familiar with the word. I'm, my vocabulary is lacking. Some patients into revealing secret inner truths. I won't return them to the doctors until they've returned the art they've stolen from me. Do you know? Do you know? An, okay. My name is Doctor Wakefield. I'm looking for a man who lived here some time ago. Would you happen to know one Alexander Dupree? The name does not ring a bell. I have not been here long, though. You should ask the other patients. They may be able to help you. Some have been here for many years. Or you could ask one of the others. The brutes who keep us here. Where? What happened? Would you happen to know where your drawings are now? I suspect they are somewhere in the archives, since I have seen confiscated items taken there before. You seem different from the rest. Can I trust you? I've been trying to sneak in for days now, but Miss Riswell keeps a tight guard on the door. I even stole a key from one of those guards. You're a doctor. Surely you could gain entry. If I could recover my drawings, I would be so grateful. Here, take the key with you. I must go. I have a key. Large door made of strong metal. This must lead to a secure ward of the hospital. Secure ward that, that key does not fit. That's an interesting look, uh, character. Mr. Insane Dude over there. I'm kind of glad that they switched characters for this uh, second season. Uh, kind of pulled it back from where it was headed. Which I think was just straight up Lovecraftian crazy shit. Um. Good morning, madam. My name is Dr. Waitfield. I am a psychiatrist. Oh my, good morning. Forgive my manners. I get so excited when we have visitors. We don't get many of these these days. And certainly we are lacking experts like you. What do you mean, you lack experts? Everywhere, every every year, we get less funding from the crown. First, the doctors started started to leave. Then it was the caretakers. Now very few remain. But we have a responsibility to our poor patients, do we not? We must care for them. They cannot be out living with proper people. We must keep ourselves safe and our patients too. Of course. I'm looking for a man who used to be a patient here a few years ago. His name is Alexander Dupree. Do you perchance, did you perchance ever meet him? 
Alexander Dupree. Yes. There was one with a foreign name. I remember something of him. A good man, if I recall correctly. An educated man. But there was something strange about them, about him, wasn't there? I believe it scared some of the other patients. You never know, with the slop. I'm sorry that I can't remember much. There have been so many people here, it's hard to keep track. Have you worked here for long? Yes, a long time. You can scarcely remember how many years. Time goes slowly in here. And the isolation? The rules don't allow us to leave. I don't know what is happening in the world anymore. But we have our duty, do we not? Who else will care for our patients? May I request access to the institution's archives? There should be some information there about a man I'm looking for, Mr. Dupree. I'm sorry, Doctor. The archives are private. We must not allow anyone to access them without the proper authority. Many of our patients come from good families, you see, and we take great care to respect their privacy. But do not look so crestfallen. You would not find much in any case. It's a, it is a long time since they have been organized. Be funny if she was actually a patient. And she's just sitting there pretending. Sorry, sir, the archives are off limits. Can I look at that? Shelf, all these books. These books are not volumes of psychiatry or medical science, but old serial novels for patients to read. Alright, well, let's go upstairs. Because that's allowed. This must be the recreational recreational wing, where patients relax and pass the time. Perhaps here I can find someone who met Alexander Dupree while he was institutionalized. Marble bust. Man wearing a worn out military uniform. Lost in God knows what thoughts. I'm going to talk to him. Excuse me, sir. I, I could not help but notice your uniform. Were you in the army? Leave me alone. You do not want to talk to a coward such as myself. Sir? Leave me alone. I am just a coward. Okay. Good morning, madam. My name is Wakefield. I'm looking for a former patient of this institution. The rumbling. She doesn't seem to have noticed me. Have you... Madam, if I may persist, have you been living here for long? The rumbling. I'm looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him. An eyeless curse. I'm looking for a, for a man you may have met. His name is Alexander Dupree. What a strong reaction appear upon hearing Mr. Dupree's name. She must have at least met him. How can I get her to talk to me? Good morning. I am a psychiatrist, Dr. Wakefield. Quite an impressive institution you have here. Can I ask for your assistance? I'm looking for a former patient of this institution. His name is Dupree. I'm sorry, sir. I have never heard that name before. Maybe a, one of your senior colleagues could know something about this former patient. Well, you could ask Miss Riswell in the entrance hall. She's been here for years. Maybe too long. You know we caretakers live here with the patients. And we are not allowed to leave the asylum's premises. This life can get to you if you don't take proper care. I try to keep as much distance as possible from the lunatics. The asylum is quite big. But I can't help but noticing there aren't many patients around. Well, apart from those in the isolation ward, it is true that there are not many patients at present. But there are even fewer of us caretakers now. We are only three for the whole hospital. For what I've been told, in the old times, the income was enough to provide for everything we needed. A complete staff, proper accommodation for the patients, and the best doctors. But as the newer, bigger regional asylums were built, the Crown's support was gradually withdrawn from East Hill. Soon, everyone started leaving, and this is what remains. Thank you in any case, and I will leave your work in peace.
the thin piece of metal holding the window open. Oh god. Dark as the room is now, I can see through the false mirror. There's a man on the other side, heavily restrained, desperately trying to free himself. There's an expression of unbearable horror on his face. Jesus, can I just break that open? Great. Oh, what's this? Coin or something. Aha! I have a coin. Let's ask this guy about the dude back there. Or not. So please do not disturb her. About the asylum. Alright. You know there are always voices coming from the place at night. Crying. Singing. The inhabitants cursing like damned souls. That's the usual. This night was different. It was all silent. I tell you. Not a single noise in the whole street. I looked up at... I looked at the madhouse and saw all the windows black. No lights. Everybody asleep in that place? Now that's strange. Then I heard it. It was a scream like no other I've ever heard. Not of a man or a woman, but of a devil from hell. That's very curious, indeed. Thank you for telling me. Sure. Alright. I have a newspaper that I could possibly give to someone. <laughs> ah, that was fun. This is the hospital archive, where a record of each patient must be stored. If Mr. Dupree was really committed to at East Hill, his file should be here somewhere. It's been a long time since his desk was last used. It is covered in discarded papers and pens and a noticeable layer of dust. Drawers are all locked, are they now? I guess they are. The cabinet contains many documents detailing the treatment of patients ranging from two decades ago to last year. This file right here, Dr. Pre Alexander, room 108A. All the files are missing! It's as if they were torn out. Only a little piece of paper remains with an address written on it. Paul Street, 26. It could be where Alexander Dupree lived before he was committed to this hospital. Paul Street. I should follow this new lead and see if it takes me somewhere useful. Uh, no, I needed to get that dude's papers. Okay. Metal locker. Seized objects. Personal facts probably sent in by patients' families, but deemed unsafe by the caretakers. One of them is a stack of thick sheets of paper, carelessly bound. Together, bearing the drawings and paintings of a troubled mind. Great. Now I can give him his, uh, drawings back. 
Watercolor paintings and drawings of different subjects, a tree, a vase of flowers, something that could be a portrait. But the colors are dispersed shapes, broken, decomposed, and mixed in a world of bright flecks. Here, are these your drawings? Great wonder, they're back! Someday they will understand light and shape as I understand them. Thank you, friend. If you want, take these cardboard sheets. Thanks to you, I have no more need of them. A few folded cardboard sheets, each one with a large symmetric patch of black ink. So they're uh, ink blots. I've heard of this technique, but always thought it in its intricacy. Patients are supposed to see them in deeper causes. This is the first card. Ah, uh, it's a butterfly. Ah, uh, that's a, that's a, an ant. Yeah, that's a fly. Uh, that's a turnip. Okay. I misclicked. Here, look at these cards. Here, look at these cards. Here, look at these cards. <laughs> Here, look at these cards. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to this uh, this new location. Paul Street. Twenty six this Paul Street. Ooh. Okay. Got a door. This door is number twenty four. I'm looking for number twenty six. Number twenty six. This is the place I was looking for, but the door is bricked up. Let's find another way to get in. Obviously, the window. Windows are thir so thoroughly cemented over that it almost mixes with the facade. Dang. This metal. Oop. Let's go around and back. The ruins of an old chapel, apparently destroyed by fire. Someone on their knees praying, their face covered by a hood. Uh, hey. Hey, dude. I was praying to the bird. It's kind of like I'm on my way through the dark. Cross remains almost intact. The old hole leads to the next building. See, I didn't even know that there was dark over there. Squeaky floor. Into the murder hole. This must be the interior of the bricked up building I saw in the street. Mr. Dupree's former residence. I cannot tell who is depicted in the portrait, since it is so badly damaged. It seems someone crushed it in the floor. The door is bricked up. There's something among the ashes. It's a piece of paper. Looks like some kind of message, but there's only one half here. The paper has been carefully burned. Hang on. A VIV. So that would be six five. Piece of paper on the table. Paper shows some seeming letter random letters, it seems as if half is missing. 
put these halves together, but some letters seem to be missing from the right half. The message does not make any kind of sense. Is that not their uh, their little motto thing that they always said to each other? Six and then five. So start with six and then go to something else and then back to five. I could try brute forcing it or I could try finding the other paper. Military medal. Is there a relief from Her Majesty the Queen and several pieces of metal engraved with the names of battles unknown to me? So I'm going to give that medal medal to uh yeah to the one dude. And I think I need to go back because I can't solve this yet unless I wanted to brute force it. So it clicks whenever I, I switch it back. So I wouldn't know. Probably like six, eight, five. It's probably a num okay. Since I think it's a number higher than six. Actually, it would be. Let's try one. That's not where I. Okay. Alright, I'm not gonna brute force it. Thought maybe I would get lucky. Let's go back. Paul Street ends here at this corner. <sighs> man, this driver is probably like, man, you just you, you keep going back and forth. This metal, I had one just like it. Got it after the battles of Lang's Neck and Ma Ma Majuba Hill in 1881, a decade ago now, for distinguished conduct in the field. It said, "What a farce!" So you were in the mill in the army, as I thought. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Doctor Wakefield, Sergeant William Conghill, Her Majesty's Sixth Light Infantry. Are you another one of those alienists? Do you doctors not realize that cowardice cannot be cured by your arts? Why are they keeping you here? 
The doctors say I suffer from a nervous disorder. I believe this is a term for when they themselves, with all their learning, do not know what to say. But I know the true name of my sickness. It is pure cowardice. I'm looking for a former patient of this hospital. You may have met him. His name is Alexander Dupree. Yes, I did know a name by that name. We met briefly. He was here when I arrived. What do you know about him? He was a proper lad, educated. He listened closely to the stories of the other inmates, but he kept his own to himself. We talked a lot. He was very close to Miss uh, Nahi, too. I think they got here at the same time. Uh, Kanhi, I'm sorry. Uh, but when he left, he did so alone. I wonder what has become of him since. Where's Miss Kanhi? She's a patient here. The lady with the uh, temperatures, temp, tempestuous, temp, tempest, uh, words, temp, oh, that, well, that one, character, you may have encountered her already, she has not been the same since, since Mr. Dupree has left, you know, she always sets to the side, alone and silent, I doubt you could talk to her at all, even if you tried, she sees things, or at least she thinks she does. What did you talk about, you and Mr. Dupree? We talked about my time in the south of Africa. I don't like to talk about that, but he somehow made me want to. He was persuasive. He was very interested in one specific story. Almost obsessed about it. He wanted to know every little detail. Could you tell me that story? I'm trying to find a patient of mine who has gone missing, and this could be my only hope of finding him. I don't like to relive those memories. A missing patient, you say? I. Alright. Maybe my story will be of some use then. It happened during the Battle of Majuba Hill. I'm sure you've heard of it. In March of 81. 1881. The attack of the Boer army had taken us by surprise. And our regiment was forced to split up. We qu quickly found ourselves alone. Just a few men lost on the barren plain. But I don't want to bore you. No, sir. You certainly aren't. Please continue. As I said, we were few. And we were sure the enemy was lurking out there. In the cold air of dusk, a thick fog formed quickly, masking everything around us. We could barely see each other. Then the others started to disappear in the fog, which was getting thicker and thicker. I could still hear footsteps for a while, then nothing. I called their names aloud, even then I felt something there, not far, a murmur or a beating, something alive, waiting, couldn't help walking towards it. All of a sudden my feet felt something in the mud, a body. They were all there, and dead. Only Captain Skid was missing. Then the mist cleared out. What had happened? I never knew for certain. I didn't see anything. Or if I did, my mind refused to bear such memories. What happened to Captain Skid? When, we fi when he finally regained consciousness, it was like someone else looked out at us through his eyes. I guess whatever happened affected him. Changed him. I know he came back to London. Mr. Dupree asked me of his whereabouts. Maybe he tried to contact him. Or hear the rest of the story. He was quite, quite preoccupied by it. Do you know where I could find Captain Skin? The last I heard from 
from fellow veterans had lost himself to a frenzy of alcohol, opium, and bad company. This downward spiral led him, as many others, to a wretched, uh, nadir, dirty hole deep in St. Giles Rookery, known as the Crimson Nest. Mayhap you will find him there, alive even, if you're lucky. Here's a picture of our regiment. You can see him there. Yeah! There's, there's nothing I can do for for this dude in here. Like, I don't I don't know of any way to get to the other side. Oh, except through the uh, to that metal door, which I can't get to. Saint Giles. I've been here. This is some of St. Giles. The Crimson Nest shouldn't be far. This is what this was the uh I think the third episode. I ended up in here, I think. Oh shit. man. He looks like the man from my nightmares. He's blind in one eye. The empty socket glistens in the lamplight. He seems to want something from me in my dream. The man had said, give me back what he took. He doesn't like anyone. He doesn't look like anyone in this picture. I doubt he's ever been I doubt he, it has ever been his. Give me back what he took. He had said only in his nightmare. I would think it would be the cards, right? Because, like, like, can I walk past him? I can't. I'm walk away from him. I guess I don't have what he took then. It's in the. I bet it's in here. I guess I am brute forcing it. Gotta be another piece of paper in here. Let's see. I found another walkthrough just in case I can't figure this out. Let's take the papers out here to the uh, person worshipping.
Nope, nothing. Alright. I can either brute force it. Because, I mean, at this point, it's only one thing that I need to do. Not seven. Eight. Five. Six. I already tried one. I think I did two and I did three. Four. Five. Six, five, six, I think it's actually that was different. Passageway. Oh, Jesus. Someone's sitting here wearing a horrible mask and yellow robe. He is not moving. And he has no head. Can go. You have fun in there, uh, lady. So I'm gonna give that mess to the dude.
Is he gonna walk up again or is he just standing there waiting? Looks at the mask for a second, only to stare at me again. Give me back what he took. Jesus. Okay, so that's not it. Maybe in, in here. He's up! I'm looking at my direction with a cold, un, you know, unemotional gaze. Maybe this, uh, this lady here. There's something about that. Looks like it. Oh! This is the isolation ward for you this time. Face of the playwright, the face of the playwright. Oh no. Oh Jesus. He is striking the glass strongly with his fist. His expression is a pure hate. I don't think he can see me, but I feel that somehow he knows I'm here. Oh god. That poor woman. Must have taken her to the isolation ward. I wonder if they left the door open. They did. The light, it floods the world with shades. Room 201A. See anything? Okay. Hello, my name is Wakefield. The butterfly is not what it seems. Excuse me, but what butterfly? There is much more after the scarab. What if I show him the mask? What if I wear the mask? It's a 
401, eh? Old pendant on the dresser. Looks valuable. Yeah, so you're just a fucking thief, huh? Fucking doctors. Can't trust them. Someone's speaking over there. Oh, that's that's the doorway out. I th see. I thought I was clicking this, and I wasn't. Is that looks like someone in the window? Mirror covered in dust. I wonder what the things seen in this room. What happens if I were? No. It's a bed. Nothing special about it. That makes me wonder what is special about the bed. The door is closed for good with bricks, like they were pretending it never existed. They didn't even try to disguise it. Bunch of bricks. Either the construction is recent or not yet finished, or they were in a hurry to seal this room. Isolation cells. Door shut and locked. No way to open it. Clearly cemented. No way I could clear a path using a tool. This window here, though. So that means that there is either a light on the other side, and that is sort of a transparent-ish thing, or it's like actually... a way outside. So much more after the scarab. Huh. Okay, I thought I had already done that. It displays a one it displays the its wonderful colors. It fills your eyes with awe, but it's only a show. Beyond behind the veil, its body crawls on the dirty ground, hides in the darkness, and transforms. Another of its lies. So what would this be? Its dark body creaks and rustles with its blind movements. Slowly, step by step, it gets closer and closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. What about this one? It will come, whatever you do. It will cry out loud, looking at you from everywhere at the same time. And what about this one? Him. Him. His mask. My mate from the other room used to scream at night. Always told us he could feel something under his bed. A presence. An eyeless gaze. Aha. Uh -huh. An ordinary bed with absolutely nothing. Yep. See, I knew it. There was something wrong with that bed. It told me it was an ordinary bed with nothing to worry about. Okay. That doesn't make sense as far as the uh, geography goes, but okay. Doors bricked up. Why would they do such a thing? 
I doubt anyone has slept in this place in a long time. One day was sealed too. But there's a writing. There's something written on the wall. One of them came last night. I knew what it would... I knew what it actually was because of the sign it carried. The sign of the eye. I killed it. Like a... Uh, I killed it and hit it well. If more come, they will not find their friend nor its eye. Okay. Creepy. Ah. <sighs> uh. I had to have missed something in here. Can I like, like do that? There's like something on the floor. Oh. Yeah, now I can. I think I, I think I can do that. Ooh. There's something there. Half buried in the soil under the tile. Ooh. Bird. It's a long dead bird. Just feathers and bones. It's holding something in its beak. A dirty and horribly deformed glass eye. I bet that's what I need. Let's try giving that to the to the dude. Yeah, that was it. This must be the Crimson Nest. I've heard of such places. Where people lose their minds to opium shipped from the Orient. Never thought I would set foot in one. Um, just one thing. Uh, the British actually pretty much shipped opiates over to to Asia and stuff, and got everyone addicted on it. That that's that's actual history. Oh, cool. An addict completely asleep. I may sneeze in a moment. What's the matter, madam? My husband. He's unconscious. Please, dear, wake up. I'm a doctor. Please let me see him. I'm so sorry. He's not breathing and he has no pulse. Your husband passed away hours ago. No. No. No, it can't be. Adam. I'm late. It's time I couldn't save him. What do you mean, this time? I discovered my husband's addiction to this hellish drug. They call opium months ago. At first I thought he was sick, as I saw him grow thinner every day. Then I discovered he was visiting this, this place. I was very worried. I tried to dissuade him 
But he wouldn't listen. He's just, this lady is very composed for someone whose husband just fucking died. And she just found out the addiction was stronger than he was. At times, he was away for days. I'd come here and find him passed out. The only way I could wake him was to put these smelling salts under his nose. Now I'm too late. Here, take the vial. Maybe you'll be in time to save another soul from this curse. Aha. Uh -huh. A woman looking at the roof with her eyes going white. She's muttering some ramblings. Short-haired woman smoking without worry. Short-haired woman. Hello, I'm looking for a man I who I believe frequents this establishment. A war veteran from the south of Africa called Skid. He is riding on a slate. I... Can you understand what I'm saying? He has written, can't hear. So I suppose I should communicate him by writing on this slate. Looking for Captain Skid. Don't know. He doesn't know the captain's name, then. He has written something else. Object of value. That means he wants a bribe. Fucking idiot doctor. He, he's all book smarts and no street smarts. Captain. It is Captain Skid, no doubt. He is unconscious, but he still breathes. <gasps> What's the matter? Who let you in? Get out! My name is Wakefield. I need to talk to you. Are you Captain Skid, Her Majesty's Sixth Light Infantry? That title belongs to, to me no more. Who are you? What do you want from me? Leave me alone with my misery. A soldier that used to serve under your command told me where I might, I might find you here. William Conghill. Yes, I remember him. We served together. I've made many mistakes trying to forget those years of my life. Now I'm afraid those memories will follow me to my grave. I'm looking for information about a man called Alexander Dupree. I used to know Dupree. He was not a man, but a friend. What do you want with someone like him? There are certain secrets that are better left undisturbed. A patient of mine has disappeared. Alexander is the only one that may know of his whereabouts. If it is true that Dupree is involved in your patient's disappearance, then I'm afraid the matter is out of my reach. Yours too. Now please, leave me alone. Have you ever heard the name Jeremiah Devitt? I must find him. Devitt. No, I have not. I found your medal. It was in a house on Paul Street, door 26. You were there, right? You, th you think you know what you're doing, but you cannot imagine what you're getting into. I am asking you for the last time. Leave and forget this matter. I will not leave until I find the answers I am seeking. Tell me what I want to know. You fool. That's... <sighs> for the devil's sake. All right. If you want to ruin your life, you are free to do it. What really happened on Majuba Hill? Sergeant Conghill told me the story, but his details were confusing. I will never be able to forget that day. Nobody knew what really happened. Command decided that we must have been ambushed. Now I know better. There was something in that fog. Something that did not like us entering its domain. A sentinel of some sort. 
That thing is what killed my soldiers. How did you meet Alexander Dupree? I was in the veterans hospital recovering from an illness unknown to the physicians. An ailment of the soul. Dr. Dupree managed to contact me there. He wanted to know my version of the story. What had happened to me in the battle of Majuba Hill. Do you know why he was so interested in your story? I did not know immediately, but with time, I realized. The truth about what happened to me was important to his activities, as was myself. But if you think he tricked me, you could not be more wrong. I wanted to enter the dragon's mouth. I burned with a need to know. Inside that house, I saw a machine still operating. What was that? A machine? I do not know what you're talking about. It was just one of the many places I used as a base for Alexander's activities. The only one whose location I was allowed to know. What was Mr. Dupree doing then? You really do not know, do you? Have you ever heard of the playwright? Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard, I've heard it mentioned. Oh. As I imagined, you know nothing. Dupree is not alone. He is but the peak of a pyramid, a vast group in which powerful people take part. A society acting in secret, ruled by a single sacred law. See that no one knows. I was part of it. Dupree himself recommended me. We gathered every month. What we saw, you cannot imagine. A curtain of normalcy protects the mind from something, an outer something. The fog of the veil protects us, protected us. But through the veil, we could peek out into the abyss. We could know of the unspeakable shapes that were that writhe beyond a black nothingness entirely full of horrors. We could never cross the threshold. What we saw was forbidden. Look at me. Forbidden. I could not bear it anymore, so I ran. I ran and I hid from them. It was too late to run or forget. Let's go back to East Hill and try to talk to Miss Conhey. If what the captain said is true, she must have been one of them. She could know where to find them. Yeah, have a mess, dude. Okay. Oh. Are they putting on a play? I cannot do this anymore. I don't care. I just want us to be together. You know, it is too hard. I don't feel free. I know, dear. I know. We will figure it out. How how are you home so early? I knew all along. How could you? You know, you never loved each other. Silence. You have no honor. And you, what do you have to say? Why? I've given you everything. You wouldn't. 
understand. I... Enough. You will leave in the morning. I won't see you ever again. I'll wait for you at dawn under the old windmill so you can try to recover what little honor you once had. I'll be there. What the fuck? What? I must have fainted. What is this? Where am I? Uh... Cannot see outside clearly. A matchbox. This could be useful. Of course the door is locked. The door is shut for good and it has no knob, no keyhole even. How the fuck did I get in here then? Oh, I can... Marks in the... There are marks in the dust on the floor. Looks like this chair has been moved for some... A hole! Small hole in the wall. It's too dark for even me to see inside. Is it going to be a, a, a bird? Blanket on the bed. Shred of this blanket. I could swear I saw a pair of feet in there. Who, who is there? We have met before. I cannot see you. Who are you? Do you not recognize my voice? No. I'm sorry. I don't. Do you know what this place is? It is the starting point. The first place to look. But who are you? What are you doing there? Remember this. I will not be here forever. Darkness will light your way. Stay out of the light. Then I will disappear, and you will be alone in the end. I don't understand. Tell me who you are. I can hear breathing behind the wall. Clearly. The f hell am I supposed to do? I must take it with me. Cover that, maybe? Yeah. I'll let darkness light your way. Holy shit, the room continues on. Devit, is that you? Devit! Can I go past him? No. Nope. It's like, hey! <laughs> Look, there's two of me. Now I'm sitting down. Now I'm looking at some chairs. It's obviously ribbon on the ground, right? Oh, there's so many of you. Tell me, why are you doing this? Is it because you care about your patients? Or out of scientific curiosity? Is it for your pride? Because it is your professional responsibility? Or is it because it is the right thing to do? Mm. 
Why are you doing this? <gasps> no, damn it. It is all right. I mean, leave, leave. I, it's German things. Uh, how are you feeling? I feel dizzy. What happened? Where are we? At my house. I went to East Hill to meet you and found you inside one of the cells. Unconscious. Your clothes stenching of opium smoke. I had brought you here. You've been out for a day and a half. I, I think it's coming back to me. As at one of those opium dens. I might have passed out after breathing that dense smoke. Listen, I have much to tell you. My, inve my investigation unearthed a great deal of new information. Alexander was indeed institutionalized in East Hill, but his files are missing. I managed to track down a man who knew him. He told me a story you would not believe. And there was a, this woman, a patient at the hospital. She was completely out of her mind. She attacked me. What is happening to these people, Kaufman? How is this Alexander related to Mr. Devitt? I think this patient, Miss Conhe, Miss Conhe, might know how to find Alexander. He must go back there and talk to her, whatever it takes. I'm afraid that will not be possible. What do you mean? Frau Conhe is no longer at East Hill. She escaped last night. God Almighty. Do not worry, I mean, free, free, free that. Uh, I think I may know where she is hiding. Get ready. We must leave promptly. Yay. Did I do it? Oh my. I'm open. They are coming. They are letting him in. Now that the door has been opened, they are coming. Oh, so was that lady at the beginning? Was that uh, Miss Con Con? No, that's she's older. Oh god, did she set her house on fire? No, it's birds! Birds! So many birds. The playlight was created thanks to the generous support of players who participated in the crowdfunding campaign. Excellent. Well, that was fantastic. Uh, I will play more next week. Just one episode, though. I will not do another two-parter unless I forget to stream again, which is what happened last week. <sighs> okay. Thank you for watching. And have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. And I will see you back here next week. Next Sunday. <laughs>